Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Coffee and Headphones. This is the podcast where two brothers talk about brother things. My name is Caleb. My name is Trevor. And today we are going to continue our NBA talk, and we're going to give you our Dark Horse MVP candidates. Now, uh, if you missed our last show, we actually did talk quite extensively about, um, what, seven NBA teams that are question marks coming into the season. It was a very long podcast, so in the YouTube description, <laughs> I put the timestamps if you want to skip around to your favorite team or whatever. Um, but I think before we get to the Dark Horse MVPs, Trevor, let's uh, let's talk about this album that came out yesterday, New Hollywood. Uh, I don't want to get too too much into detail because I'm actually hopping on uh, CHH Hysteria's podcast this upcoming Monday, uh, where I'll be talking a little bit more in depth, but... Just like initial thoughts, go. I waited a long time for that album. And I thought it was pretty good. Uh, It was definitely interesting. It was very different than what I expected uh, when I was- Not a rap album. No, not at all. And when I was listening to track one, I was like, what in the world is this? And then as I moved throughout it, I was like, this is actually pretty dope, but very different than what I expected. Um, And then obviously, you know, my favorite tracks were uh, probably track 12 and then Praise. Yo, did you peep that track 12 used the same pad as I did on Politics from Anxiety? I did. Isn't that crazy? crazy. The exact same. So, hey, bro, every artist uses spice samples. Don't get confused unless your name's John Bellion, probably um yeah bro what did you think of kids has been out for a while but what did you think of the sample send me i go send me i go um i thought that it was fitting for a song but i thought it was a little bold a little bold yeah what do you mean i because the the album to me was Probably, and I only listened once, granted, and uh, my wife was not a fan, so (laughs) the entire time I was hearing, what is this? We should change this. But um, I thought that album was like a B minus, if we're talking albums, and uh, that sample deserves to be on like an A album. But I don't know. What do you feel about it? Um, I think the thing that threw you and a lot of the Discord kids and Harley off was the fact that it wasn't like a typical rap album. For me, the Sonic build reminded me a lot of Swimming by Mac Miller meets Jesus. And uh, I think that's a lane that obviously I'm going to love and people who kind of like consume that kind of dysfunctional art are gonna love it because it's new and it's kind of innovative it's not what's popping in chh or really hip-hop in general so uh, i liked it i understand the like underwhelming aspects that people are are labeling it but i think it's going to be one of those albums that it grows on you in time like a lot of kanye albums and that's rg's biggest influence so it makes sense um I do have a little bone to pick, though. Andy Minio is listed as a feature. Did you hear Andy Minio? No. And granted, none of the features were, like, put in the title or right. on the, the track list or, like, under composers. But right. no, I didn't. Not. It was on the flyer, though, the track list that Reach posted. So I don't know what's up with that. We do know New Hollywood has several different versions so i don't know if maybe they just like what this man first it was a hanger that was a full gallon of water i'm thirsty bro i get it bro but listen this is 12 dollars. it'll change your life it's like 58 cents yeah but you can it's the worst water ever i usually i'm very picky (laughs) about my water um but right now I'm not. So it says 100% satisfaction guaranteed, and I'm at about an 80. 
but you're you know getting what? that 58 we'll cent back boy that's right <laughs> okay uh, well, well I, i'll get my time to go to the trouble um that also, gas money i just want to shout out big sean real quick um for those that don't know big sean did like our last video specifically yeah. specifically um a reel that apex made that caleb made whatever his name is here today of us talking about his song bitcoin 92 common um i'm glad big sean just watched the reel because if you watch the whole thing he would see that caleb is a hater and he wouldn't no. I disagree. I think the real makes me look more like a hater than anything because in the video, I say like, I respect Big Sean. I love the, what, the Dark Sky Paradise album, all that. But he just saw the part of me being like, I'm so disappointed Quinn's working with Big Sean. He <laughs> saw the part of you saying it's going to be amazing. He didn't see you hating on Double or Nothing or anything like that. So, okay, but unless I, he went and he watched the video, I don't know the I, whole thing. I doubt it. I'm going to be honest. I really doubt it. I doubt but he would see after, our reel, but he did. After six, seven, eight, probably eight years of sticking up for Big Sean, I think it's good that he saw that part. Because, as you yeah. know, the others in my life do not like Big Sean at all. I am a big fan. So that was super cool for me. I'm not like Caleb. I don't meet all these celebrities and basketball players and don't get reposted and talked to by rap artists. So to me, that was one of the coolest things that has happened in a while. <laughs> um, if you didn't see that, go back and watch it. Go watch because, it, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, That's all and I'm, uh, I'm not famous, just despite how he made it sound. I'm, I'm very not famous. Um, yes, but, but he's very well connected, apparently. Moving, um, moving on, I guess it's time to hop into the basketball portion of this basketball show. Yeah, see the deflection? All right, let's yeah, go. So, so should I start? Yeah, Mom, let's do it. We're going to, yeah, Mom. <laughs> Look at that mailbox. Yo, our mom, anytime we're like winning in an argument, or not even an argument, anytime we're just like, that's not true. She's like, hey, look, squirrel. Like anything to get us to not talk about it anymore. It worked for so many years too. And I'm sure other moms do this, but our mom was a master at it. And I've really tried to pick that up lately because it's just the easiest way to defuse an argument. But the trick is nobody can catch on to what you're doing. So, it's a hard skill to like actually apply. It is. She's one of the greats. But yeah, let's <laughs> let's move on okay. to the basketball person. So All today right. we're talking about dark horse MVP candidates, and uh, there's a several like great names you can throw in there. Um, there's a lot of like MVP candidates who aren't necessarily dark horses this year. I feel like every time someone wins back to back the field is a lot more open for that third season. Um, but my choice, and you can call me a homer, bro. You can call me biased or whatever. My choice, no, it's Zach okay. Levine, baby. Okay. And um, okay. I have I have stats to back up my argument. Would you like for me to read them to you? Yes, I would. Okay. And, bro, I went old school today. I wrote them down. I really care about this. Wow. I'm, I'm going to read to you. Jokic. I feel like your laptop was just dead. What? <laughs> I said, I feel like your laptop was just dead. That's why you wrote them down. Oh, uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should read Jokic's stats from the 2019-2020 season. This is the year before his first MVP because he's the reigning MVP. He averaged 19.9 okay. points per game. Which mm -hmm. surprised me. He didn't hit 20 the year before he won MVP. Um, he shot about 53% from the field, or just a little bit under. 31% from three. Not great. He improved for his MVP seasons. 31% yeah. from three from a center. Yeah. Yeah, but it's known for passing. in 2020, he averaged seven assists per game, to your note that he's known for passing. 3.1 turnovers which, you know, that ratio is very similar to Zach Levine. 
9.7 rebounds per game. And then he was a defensive negative until about last year. So it was still half a block. Zach Levine's last two seasons. We'll start with last year when he was dealing with a, a broken thumb for two months and knee problems for most of the season. He averaged 24 and a half points per game, four and a half assists per game, six, 4.6 rebounds per game and 2.6 turnovers per game, which was a great uh, decrease in turnovers because ever since coming to Chicago, he'd averaged about three and a half. So he cut out yeah. like a whole turnover a game last season. And a lot of that is he actually had ball handlers around him for the first time ever. He shot 48% from the field with a bum knee and wow. 39% from three. That's great. Wow. The season before, before Lonzo Caruso DeMar came over, he averaged 27 and a half points per game, five assists per game, five rebounds per game, three and a half turnovers, which I talked about. He's cut down 51% shooting from a two guard and 42% from three. Zach Levine is one of the most underrated players in the league. We spoke about this a little bit on last week's show. DeMar DeRozan recently went on JJ Reddick's podcast and said that Zach Levine is a top five talent in the NBA. And I honestly think, so this season is going to go one of two ways for the Chicago Bulls. We got more news since our last episode on Lonzo Ball. He could potentially miss the whole season, which Trevor called, or he could be out two or three months, which Billy Donovan is hoping for. We're not really sure what's going to happen, but we do know the ball is going to be in Zach Levine's hands more often than it was last year. So he's going to either step up big time or he's not. And I've seen him improve every single year in some aspect. He's a two-time um, dunk, dunk contest winner. So his athleticism is out of this world. He's a two-time All-Star. He's All-NBA. And I think next year he has a real shot with DeMar being a little bit older. DeMar has said also on the, the podcast episode that he's going to shoot more threes, maybe be a little bit more passive with, with scoring. They just, you know, Zach was injured. Yeah, yeah, so he had a bigger role last year. So I can see Zach Levine averaging, flirting with 30 points per game. And if he's really that guy and he takes that step, the Bulls could be very similar to the Nuggets, not last year, but the year before when they were the two seed, right? Three seed, something like that. I think and they so, were the three seed, I think. Yeah, I, th I think so too. So that is, uh, that's kind of what I expect. Now, obviously, I'm biased. I watch more Chicago Bulls games than your average NBA fan. So I see how Zach plays. He doesn't get any freaking respect from the referee he's one of the most physical players he's a slasher he's always at the rim and he oh, i meant to look up his his uh free throws per game but it's way lower than it should be demar has taught him and you saw that last year how to draw fouls a little bit more yeah if absolutely. he can get if he can get like uh jimmy butler type free throw numbers you know eight nine per game Easily, he's going to average 30. So that's my that's my dark horse candidate. You can call me, you know, biased. I don't really care. But uh, it's no bull that Zach Levine is going to be better this year than he was last year. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's a good pick. I mean, I don't really have any arguments against that. I think that it's just as good as mine, maybe better. I mean, you had all the stats, so, you know, yeah. but what do you expect from a Bulls fan defending Zach Levine? But I agree with you on two things. Uh, one, I think Zach Levine has learned a lot from DeMar DeRozan already quickly, mm -hmm. which he sort of needed. If you look back at his career, he's had talent around him, but I can't really think of, like, a veteran that he's had. No, no. The only vet that he's had really is that that young, who's good, but he's a big. You know, he. I guess Garrett Temple. But what are you learning from Garrett Temple? No, so yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this is a whole different thing, right? It's yeah. like now you have somebody. It's like a perennial. I don't want to compare it to this, but this is the only thing I could think of. It's like uh, Gary Payton learning from Steph Curry. You know. Mm -hmm. Or no, Jordan Poole. That's a better analogy. Jordan yeah, Poole. I was gonna say 
Uh, Gary Payton. I like Gary Payton, and I've been watching highlights of Gary Payton Sr., um, so it just got stuck in my head. But, um, yeah, I think Zach Levine has a chance to – I don't know how much better his stats will be, but I definitely think he'll continue doing what he's been doing. Regardless and of if he year, scores more, regardless of if he scores more or less, Steph Curry's first MVP season, he didn't average 25 a game. So I, I could see if the Bulls are that nice, which they're not going to be like, I don't think the Bulls are going to win the championship or anything like that. But if they have, like, they have more continuity than most of the East right now. They have a really good locker room right now. If they have just that chemistry, we have a more, we have more of an advantage this year with Lonzo being down because we can prepare for it going into the season which last year we couldn't. So when that wall comes, we know what to do. We have a nice guard rotation think, for him. Do you think it matters how good your team is? I mean, it's an age-old question, right? I mean, last year, and the Nuggets were the six seed. Individual sixth award, right? Yeah. It's an individual award. But I also think without Jokic last year, the Nuggets are last in that conference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or and without – without, Without Zach, I mean, last year was DeMar's year for sure. But without Zach, man, if you take Zach off of the 2022-2023 Bulls, we're not a playing team, I don't think. Like, we're not. We're either too old or too young. And Zach kind of, in a weird way, is one of those rare superstars that glues the team together, like a Steph, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, Steph is older. Mm-hmm. But Draymond's old. But Clay yeah. is well, how old is Clay? Clay's 32-ish, I think. His so. body is old, you know. And he's had um, two huge leg injuries. And then you yeah, you have a lot of old people on that team. You have a lot of young people on that team. I do think like a little off topic, but the Warriors definitely made the right call moving away from having all of those players that are wonderful on other teams now off of their team just a few years ago I think it was right after Clay like the like Eric Pascal and uh D'Lo and all those guys yes yeah D'Lo that's how I was thinking Nick Young played for the Lakers and he's not Nick Young played for the Warriors too but he's very old now and retired yes but yeah yeah yeah. no it's super cool um also Nick Young reminds me of Nick Cannon for some reason but uh, Probably because never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> All right. Well, that's fair. Um, yeah. Anything else? I would. Uh, yeah. I mean, Zach is twenty-seven, so he's just now kind of entering his prime. Um, you see, like I, I forget. I think Curry was twenty-eight when he won his first MVP. So you see, like James Harden was twenty-eight as well. This could very well be that that year that Zach gets more of his due. And I think DeMar talking like that will go a long way with the media in the same way that um, hyping up, like Bam hyping himself up for Defensive Player of the Year went a long way. Draymond back in 2016, like the media listens to players more than watching the game. So I think that will go a long way with the MVP. I think a big thing this season is we have we always have those front runners, right? And, like, to me, the year Jokic won MVP, I thought he should win it, like, before the season even started. I thought that he was going to win it. And then last year, I had full faith that Jokic was going to win again. Nobody did. Um, this upcoming year, it may be a little different because we have Jamal back and um, MPJ, and we have a different team to a degree. Um, but here's my thing. I think if the Nuggets make like a deep play into the playoffs, we have a very real possibility of him winning again. He's only plus 900 odds to win the MVP right now, which out of a race of however many players are in the league, 130 or something. What? How many players are in the league total? Well, there's 30 teams and there's 15 players on each roster. Okay, so 30 times, so 300 and no. <laughs> 450. What? 15 
Uh, think about time. You have 15 minutes three times. How many minutes is that? Oh, yeah, you're right. 45, and then you add the zero. My math, my math has been really off lately. And my spelling, too, because I'm usually really good at this stuff. Um, me and Harley had a spelling contest the other day. Um, I'm down to 10th grade spelling. So uh, life is good, dog. Um, but no, like, and then you obviously have Luca, right? Right. And you have who I think is the favorite, yeah. right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would make sense if he was. Um, yeah, but for sure. I think he's going to be up there every year, sort of like a Joel and B. Um, mm -hmm. but maybe not necessarily win it because here's the thing with people that are expected to win it, they have to play up to that. Whereas if other guys play even just a little bit better, like Zach Levine or the guy I'm going to say, which I'll let's say yet, but like you see that and it gets more rec like more recognition and, uh, yeah, so we'll see, but who I'm going to say is not like. An incredibly dark horse by any means. He's on that list, uh, but he's down that list a little bit. Obviously, I wanted to say Jokic again, but that's probably not accurate this year. Um, like you said, back to back, it gets so much harder. Three times in a row, nearly impossible. I can't think of anybody that's won the, the MVP three times in a row. Can Did you? Larry Bird do it? If anybody did, it was him, I would say. Yeah. Larry, um, Bill, I, Russell. Yeah, maybe like back then, but I guess modern day, I nobody yeah, has. No one does it. And it, it's a, it attests to like how the league has changed so much. And there's always been wonderful basketball players in the league, but the league has evolved so much. Now there's almost everyone is an amazing athlete, and you see – six seven eight the eighth man on the bench go in and get 30 points sometimes you know it's just like a completely different league there's a lot of talent and there's a lot of competition for these like awards and these accolades who I have is one of my new favorite players uh a lot of new people's a lot of people's new favorite players reminds me of AI and Derek Rose who we both love uh, AI is from Virginia. Derek Rose is obviously one of my favorite Bulls players of all time. John Morant. John Morant. Valid. John Morant. Very valid. Very valid. Um, he has taken a team in a market that nobody really cared about other than people who lived in Memphis. I mean, the last time I remember even remotely caring about Memphis was Zach Randolph and J.A. Yeah, Mike Conley. Yeah, and uh, Rudy Gay. And all Who's J.A.? Uh, Giannis Valachunas. J.V., maybe? Which was yeah. totally way after that. Yeah, what I meant. I feel um, like you probably meant T.A., actually. Tony Allen. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway. Anyways, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I just think Ja has sort of revived the team, right? And it's sort of like, I felt like Deer and Fox had the potential to do something like that in Sacramento. Yeah, same. And he almost did. He, uh, he they, they were did. the ninth seed. They won 40 games, but uh, fired their coach, which is Fired their coach, crazy. made a couple of big changes. Utilized Buddy Hill a lot less than they should have. And, and De'Aaron Fox just got worse, honestly. He did. Um, and I don't know. Athletically, he's still, like, amazing. He's one of the I still like him, but, yeah. I really like him. Um, but it looked like his basketball IQ went down in a way. Yeah. Um, it looked like his also, defense was way worse, too. It sort of reminded me, and this is going to sound awful. I hope none of them are listening. Uh, but whenever I was in high school and you have a team around you that can't necessarily score, uh, so you take it upon yourself to do everything and you actually contribute to making the team a little bit worse. 
right? It's like it's like he lost trust in who he had around him, and it yeah. became a different story. Now, Ja is very different. Ja has some good pieces around him, and I feel like Ja's basketball IQ is high. Obviously, the thing that stands out about Ja is – you want me to say it? Yes. His athleticism and raw talent. There you go. Yes, sir. So, and now he's had a couple of years to develop in the league. And obviously, I mean, you can have guys playing street ball in all parts of the U.S. that have that type of athleticism and that type of raw talent. But making it to the NBA and then becoming an NBA player is yeah. very different. And, be- and I think becoming I- a Sorry, go ahead. It's your, no, no, your no, second part. Um, no, I think... <laughs> do you no, want me to say it or not? Okay. Yes. I was going to say, becoming a franchise player so quickly is so rare. And the fact that he's been able to do it with his frame is just crazy. Yeah, he's a skinny dude, man. Um, but if you look at like his first hand league and now he has put on some muscle, which yeah. was necessary. Um, if he didn't, I believe he would have suffered the same fate as Chet Holgram, who uh, took a big L to LeBron this summer. But let's let's get into some John Morant stats, okay? Let's do so it. his career, he's played almost 200 games now in the NBA. Uh, 32 minutes a game is like what he's averaged throughout his career. 47% from the field goal. Uh, like in field goals and then mm-hmm. almost 33 percent and from three amazing right and then as a lanky quick player he's averaged 4.5 rebounds per game and then seven assists which is freaking amazing and about a steal per game here's my big thing all right so let's go back to like his postseason career right Almost 38 minutes. What? Do you know what his, um, like, turnovers are looking like? Because I think Uh, it may have been more the same with, like, the Zach Levine thing, needing to cut them down a little bit. Yeah, so 3.3 turnovers a game. For his career? Uh Uh-huh. But 21 points per game for his career, okay? Now, let's talk about last season and the postseason, okay? Averaging minutes are up. Uh, Last season was 33. Postseason was 38. Field goal percentage, 44 in the playoffs, but 49% all through last year. About a 50% from field. That's pretty good. Um, I don't. Here's where... Yes, a lot of dunks, but here's the thing. This man has evolved. He went from 32% career average from three. Last year, he was 34.4, and in the postseason, he was 34%. Really good. Here's where I see him being – he needs to improve quickly. Field goal or free throw percentage, 75 for career, 74 postseason, and 76 regular season last year. That's just not going to be good enough. And I, right? I didn't have Zach's, but it's 85. Okay. Right. And I believe that's something he's improved on. Uh, maybe wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, a, um, a little bit. Here's a big thing, though, bro. Okay. So this man, his career was 4.5 rebounds per game. Last year, almost six. And in the postseason, it was eight. Okay, think Man, about when that. you have this Jaron is, Jackson, when you have a seven footer who can't rebound, you got to go get it. Yeah, but I mean, you think about like AI and D Rose, right? Like they are amazing athletic players, similar to what Jaw can be. I don't yeah. think they were averaging that many rebounds. Um, the only other guard I can think of that was like, and his average was probably less than this, but for some reason, it's just what comes to my head is D-Wade. Um, I, oh, I don't man, know why. You're missing a guy who's another comparison for Ja. Who? Westbrook. Oh, true. Okay. And that's like, 
I guess that's the dilemma here. He could go the Westbrook route. I highly doubt it, though. See, here's here's the thing with why I think he'll win the MVP is Ja has a franchise that is willing to build around him at all costs. That's pretty rare to have, but he's taken a team from not being unwatchable, but a team that was super underwhelming. They were watch. bad. They were bad. They were what? About. 19 wins the year before he was drafted, something like that. Yeah. I mean, he's making guys like Kyle Anderson look really good, which, granted, Kyle Anderson is decent. He's pretty but, good. Uh, uh, so he does make teammates better, team. though. You want to hear something crazy? Yeah. Postseason, his assist per game, 9.8. That is, okay. that's nice. And two steals per game in the postseason. 3.6 turnovers, so a little higher, but 27 mm-hmm. points. And then last season, he averaged 27.4, very similar to Zach Levine. Um, so we got a guy, and I'm just going to read off all the stats now. We got eight rebounds per game, 9.8 assists, about half a block, two steals, and 27.4 points in the postseason last year. Freaking amazing dude i mean that's sort of what jimmy butler does you know um steps it up he does and i think that jaw as athletic as he is and good as he is he does a really good job making the people around him better and so, he is a- i actually have a little caveat to that because i just said that a few minutes ago too so you and i both believe that but do you remember what the Grizzlies record was without Jaw last year? I think it was pretty good, wasn't it? 21 and 6. So, yeah. how much better because they have a lesser winning percentage when he plays actually. How much better does he make the team's the team? I think we can yeah, and that's something that I've seen on ESPN and NBA TNT, uh, but I think there's – I still think he makes the team better, realistically. I do, too. I, I just want to play devil's <laughs> advocate real quick. I don't know what his plus minus is. I'm sure it's relatively high. Um, but I think there's other factors, right? Like, he is a leader. He's a young leader. He's a really good leader. When your leader's out like that, there's some things. It's like uh, mom strength when – a car is on yeah. a baby or something like that, yeah. you know? And he, so he was, also did he, – he embraced, like, that um, UD, Alex Caruso type coaching from the bench when he was out. So mm-hmm. he, he's still active and still involved in the team. And from, like, all accounts, he's a great chemistry guy. And you need an MVP that's likable, you know? I think that's one reason James Harden got slighted so many times before finally winning. People didn't really like him. People didn't really like the Rockets that much. It could be part of the reason that nobody, you know, gives or actually it's most of the reason nobody gives Rudy Gobert respect for being an all-star. Like no one likes Rudy Gobert. So if you're a likable yeah. guy like Ja, like Curry, like Jokic, then you have a, a bigger chance of actually getting recognition from the media. Mm-hmm. And he is super likable. And he's one of those people that, in my opinion, and probably most people's opinion, he just makes the NBA more fun to watch, right? And if you have a guy that – because the NBA is a business, first and foremost, yeah. right? The, need the money. owners need make money. are there to make money, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a guy that has the ability to revive a franchise and yes. come onto the scenes. Yeah. Um, and if what I like about Ja, Ja keeps it real. I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen, like, his Instagram post or Snapchat. He keeps it real like AI does, you know, like from the trenches. Yeah. He's going back to the trenches. He's giving out. He's hanging out with those people. So I respect Ja a lot for that. Yeah. Uh, so you, to your point a- about being like enjoyable and being like kind of a, a, a money maker for the franchise, because of Ja and Draymond Green, but mostly because of Ja, the Grizzlies have their first Christmas game ever this upcoming season. Like, they didn't have that in the Marc Gasol era. They didn't have that whenever, you know, like, when they were contending, when they were in the Western Conference Finals, they never had any primetime games. But because of Ja, because of how Derrick Rose, like he is with reviving a dead franchise, 
they're getting these games, these placements, which you were saying earlier, like the Grizzlies don't get that. Now they do. So I think that's a big, like he's going to have a lot more eyes on him. So of course that's going to contribute to uh, MVP race, very Luca like the, the Mavericks didn't have a lot of TV games before Luca got there after winning their championship and all that. But nearly a decade later, uh, Luca brought them back. So I, I definitely yeah. think Jaws a, a good dark horse choice. If if he's considered dark horse enough, he is for me, but I don't know what his odds are off the top of my head. Maybe top five, maybe a little bit lower. So we have Luca, Giannis, Joel, KD, Nikola Jokic, Jason Tatum, Steph, and then Ja Morant. So he's eight. And then after John Morant, you have LeBron James, Devin Booker, Kawhi. I think Kawhi would be another good one. Um, where's but, Where's Levine on that list? I know he's way down there. I don't even see him. I see him. He's past Jimmy Butler on here. That's man. The Zach Levine disrespect is gonna end this season. I promise you that. But MVP or not, is gonna end. You'd be surprised, man. I think the Jokic disrespect has finally ended, so that makes me happy. Um, yeah. And it wasn't necessarily disrespect. That man just did not get the credit he deserved. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think Zach Levine is going to be much more of a dark horse than John yeah. Morant. Um, but when you look at their stats side by side, it's they're very almost similar. Yes. So yeah. um, you can make an argument Jaws, for them. Jaws of- a bit better facilitator, obviously, as a point guard. And then and, Zach's a, a much better shooter. And I think, to your point, MVP is a very different award um, because you have to have that recognition. So Yeah. There, it's not who's players, the best player. It's really not. No. There's players that will have better stats that don't get it. Like yeah. Westbrook, for example. Like in B, last year. Those years when he had, was averaging triple doubles? No. You know, he didn't. Yeah. Just when um, he had the narrative of KD leaving. That's and when the media was paying attention. Me, what's very odd to me is it doesn't seem like there's a standard, and it seems like it's a case-by-case basis. It's like, yeah, oh, it's sure. an individual award. That's all that matters. When you're trying to for justify sure. a guy who doesn't make his team better, but then it's like, oh, well, the guy has to make his team better. And it just brings me to, like, Steve Nash, you know, that's obviously yeah. a big one. Now, the, the two, I would say the, the mutual concern for both of these players is injuries, both to the individuals. Like, Ja missed 27 games last year. Zach missed 23, I believe. And two. But also to the team. You know, Lonzo's mm-hmm. not going to be there. It, are the Wolves going to stay healthy? They were. They didn't have a healthy roster for one single game last year. Uh, and Jaron Jackson is also injured going into the season. So what's up with Did the Grizzlies? Did you say are the Wolves going to stay healthy? No, the Bulls. Um, I don't care about the Wolves. I thought that's what you said for some reason. But, yeah, I mean, like, if we think about it, I think that's going to be a big factor because as much as it's an individual award, you can't tell me if the Bulls don't make a run at it or the Grizzlies don't make a run yeah. at it. You can't I be in the play-in. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah, dog. Well, anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I don't think, think so good. either. So I guess it would be uh, up to you guys listening, watching this. Let us know who you agree with more, who is your Dark Horse MVP candidate. Uh, let us know if you want more basketball content. We do have a cool collaboration coming up soon. Uh, if you're a basketball fan, you'll definitely want to check that out. Uh, if you're not and then you just like hearing brothers talk, then we'll have another really fun podcast for you very soon. Uh, yeah, anything that you want to shout out, Trevor? I don't think so, bro. Um, I'll say subscribe to us on YouTube because we get the views and we get a lot of podcast downloads through um, like the podcast feed, but we don't have the subscribers yet. So if you're a YouTube a uh, user, go ahead and hit subscribe. Right there, somewhere. Somewhere, probably down there. I don't know. Right there. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Well, I guess that does it. Sweet. All right. Peace, everybody.